If tomorrow aliens came to Earth and they took away every single man-made object, resource, you name it, wiped from the planet, everything, clothing, gone, metals, apart from like metals in their purest form, like on, in the ground, gone, everything, everything, everything is gone. We're all just left in our naked bodies and we just have nature. So there's grass, there's all the, the resources of the earth, that's it. The only way to reverse this, the only way to get back to where we were, is you have to deliver to the aliens a fully functioning iPhone. Here's the question. How long would it take the human race to recreate a fully functioning iPhone? Call it an iPhone 16. If every single one of our resources was wiped, we still have all of our knowledge. Everything that you know, you still know it. All the people you know, nothing has changed inside your head, but all this stuff, gone. I love this question. And I'm kind of, in my opinion, I feel like I'm my answer to this question is the only answer that's correct. Because I've played this game with people where they're kind of like, oh, it wouldn't take us that long, blah, blah, blah. And then my first thing is, how do you think we will get in contact with other people? If I'm in Paris right now, okay, and there's someone over there maybe who happens to have computer knowledge, how would I know that? I can't go on Google and find out who the computer people are, first of all. Second of all, it's going to turn into complete anarchy because people are going to be so focused on survival. You cannot start working towards creating a fully functioning iPhone if you cannot survive, if it's cold out, it's raining in Paris right now. So my first objective would be to get shelter, right? There's no shelter. Then we got to get food. Then we got to get clothes. So we're going to have to restart society from the ground up. And you would think just because we have this knowledge, it'll be so much faster. I don't know if you look at human behavior and you look at history, history tends to repeat itself. I think we would spiral into into wars before we ever got to the iPhone part because think about it, naturally groups would have to form, leaders would have to form. The weak would kind of be protected by the strong, so to speak. There's always natural leaders who you know appear within groups. So people would have to kind of dictate themselves as like, oh, I'm in charge of this. I'm in charge of finding the food. I'm in charge of finding the shelter. Then we're gonna start fabricating a mini society that's focused around hunting and gathering and clothing before we could even get to the iPhone part it would be basically the equivalent of like Noah's Ark, in my opinion. I feel like it would be wiped clean and it would get to the point where so many generations go by that this whole iPhone concept is like a myth. It's like a new religion and we follow like the iPhone religion or something and we never succeed. But it would create the birth of the iPhone religion, so that sounds fun. Ever get this feeling like the world's just spinning way too fast? Like one minute, flip phones are blowing our minds and the next, bam, we've got these supercomputers chilling in our pockets. Which, speaking of, brings us to today's deep dive. A what if that really throws a wrench in the gears. Picture this. Aliens decide to drop by Earth, but instead of the whole laser beams and spaceships thing, they bring a giant cosmic eraser. Poof. Yeah. Every single bit of technology just gone and their price for hitting rewind on civilization you guessed it one working iphone talk about adding insult to injury right like hey we just yeeted you back to the stone age now build us the peak of your technological achievement go fetch right it's like asking a caveman to whip up some streaming service yeah so naturally we had to pick our listeners brains on this one could we actually pull it off go from zero to iphone just like that mm. and let me tell you you guys had some wild theories but one really jumped out. Oh, yeah. This listener went full Planet of the Apes on us. They figured, forget rebuilding. We just end up worshiping the iPhone. Like yeah. this holy relic of a forgotten age, totally untouchable. Kind of bleak, sure, but it really hits you with how massive this challenge is. Think about it. We're so plugged into this insane web of technology, all these interconnected parts. We just take it for granted. But starting over from scratch, that's a whole different beast. It's exactly like that scenario from the study we're looking at today. You're in Paris. It's pouring rain. You're freezing your tail off and starving. You can be out there brainstorming microchip designs. No way. Your brain's just screaming, survival mode. Exactly. Maslow's hierarchy of needs ever heard of it. Basically, it's this psychology thing that ranks what humans need most. And surprise, surprise, food, water, shelter. That's the foundation. Way before you even get to stuff like, you know, belonging or feeling good about yourself. So just to get to a point where we could even think about an iPhone again, we'd have to climb that whole pyramid one tiny step at a time. And believe me, it'd be a long climb. Okay, but wouldn't we have a bit of a head start, though? I mean, yeah, all this stuff is gone, but the knowledge is still up here, yeah. right? That's got to really? count for something. Knowledge is power, sure. But without the right tools and the whole setup to use it, it's kind of like having a Ferrari, but no gas, you know? Mm -hmm. Let's say you try to explain electricity to someone who's never even seen a light bulb. Good luck with that. Or try explaining a combustion engine without any car parts in sight. 
you can talk all day, but you're not building anything anytime soon. Okay, yeah. I'm starting to see how deep this rabbit hole goes. It's not just knowing the stuff. It's actually having the means to make it happen. And the study gets into this, breaking the whole rebuilding process into stages, kind of like a strategy game, right? You need the Bronze Age first, then comes iron, and then that long, long grind to the Industrial Revolution. Just thinking about it makes my head spin. And each one of those stages, that's like a massive leap for humankind. Years and years of trial and error. Take the Bronze Age, for example. We see a bronze tool now, we think, okay, cool, whatever. But figuring out how to melt ore, how to get the copper and tin mix just right, that took centuries of people experimenting, failing, trying again. It's mind-blowing when you really think about it. Seriously. Something we consider basic today was a massive hurdle back then. We're talking about going from whacking rocks together to becoming master metal workers. That's not your average weekend project, that's for sure. And hold on, we're just getting started. The study makes it clear. Iron and steel in particular, that's like the backbone of any advanced civilization. Skyscrapers, surgical tools, all that good stuff, thanks steel. But making steel, controlling the carbon just so, getting that perfect mix of strong and flexible, that took generations to perfect. You know, I'm suddenly feeling very grateful for my trusty stainless steel water bottle. Mm -hmm. Never thought about it like that before. Right. And don't even get me started on the whole industrial revolution thing. The study mentions crude oil, which, let's be real, we use for practically everything these days. Plastics, fuel, you name it. But finding that oil, getting it out of the ground, and then turning it into something usable? Talk about a whole other level of tech skills and infrastructure we'd have to rebuild from square one. So we're talking centuries, maybe even thousands of years, just to catch up to the 1800s. And that's if everything goes perfectly, which, mm. let's be honest, history is not exactly known for being smooth sailing. And that's like the absolute best case scenario, right? In reality, though, you got to figure there'd be hiccups along the way, conflicts popping up over who gets what resources, maybe even whole societies collapsing. Suddenly, that whole iPhone religion thing doesn't sound so crazy, does it? Oh, it's like we're trying to recreate the greatest hits of humanity, mm -hmm. but Someone lost the instructions and half the parts? This is getting tricky. Exactly. Yeah. And speaking of missing pieces, let's talk about the iPhone itself for a second. Even the study we're looking at, it breaks it down into the screen, battery, those tiny chips, all that. But honestly, that doesn't even begin to cover how insanely complex this thing really is. Totally. It's crazy how easy it is to forget that, right? Yeah. This little thing lets us watch videos, send emails, find our way around with GPS, all that. And it all fits in your hand. It's kind of mind blowing when you really stop and think about it. Right. This thing's practically magic. And just to give you a taste of how wild it really is, let's zoom in on one tiny part. The CPU, basically, the iPhone's brain. The study mentions how it's smaller than a human hair. Crazy, right? But it's not just the size, it's what's packed in there. We're talking billions. With a B, billions of transistors, these microscopic switches, all crammed onto a tiny sliver of silicon that's more transistors than you can see stars in the night sky. Okay, now my brain's officially fried. Yeah. Seriously. The precision needed to make something like that, it's almost impossible to grasp. It really is. Like, to build these chips, they need these spotless, completely sterile rooms. We're talking, can't even have a speck of dust in here, sterile. And then there are the lasers. And not just any lasers, these are super precise lasers that work at the nanometer scale. To give you some context, a sheet of paper, about 100,000 nanometers thick. We're talking a thousand times smaller than that. It's like they're performing surgery on atoms. And that's just for one tiny part of the iPhone. Exactly. And hold on, we're not even done. Let's talk materials. <laughs> iPhones need all these rare earth elements, neodymium, dysprosium, stuff most people have never even heard of. But these elements, they're crucial for everything. The colors on the screen, the magnets and the speakers, all of it. Problem is, they're not just lying around. Getting them is a whole other beast. We're talking complicated mining, often in places that aren't exactly known for being, shall we say, politically stable. So not only do we need to basically reinvent hundreds of years of technology, but we also have to navigate the crazy world of international politics and resource management. This is getting complicated. It's a tall order, that's for sure. And we haven't even touched on the refining process, which is turning those raw elements into the ultra-pure materials needed for an iPhone. That's a Herculean task in itself, requiring a whole other level of industrial processes and chemical engineering know-how. It's like we're peeling back the layers of an onion, and each layer is more complex and mind-boggling than the last. No wonder our listener pictured people creating myths around this thing. Uh. I can totally see how a civilization that's lost its technological footing could start to see the iPhone as something almost magical.
it really puts things into perspective, doesn't it? This little device in your pocket, it's not just a phone, it's a testament to the incredible ingenuity of humankind, the result of centuries of discoveries and innovations all coming together. It's like holding a tiny piece of the future in your hand, a future that, in this scenario, we're desperately trying to get back to. It's wild, right? We started off with this kind of out there, what if, aliens, erasing tech and all, but the deeper we go, the more I realize this isn't really about the iPhone, is it? It's about something way bigger. Exactly. We're talking about how interconnected our world is, this crazy balance of knowledge, resources, the way we work together. The iPhone is just a symbol, sure, but a powerful one. It shows how far we've come and how easily it could all disappear. Poof. Gone. Which brings us back to our listeners' prediction, the whole iPhone religion thing. If this crazy scenario actually went down, is that really our fate? Worshipping a leftover from a world we can't even remember? Or, given enough time, could we actually pull it off? Could we relearn everything, rebuild everything, and actually, like, hand the aliens their iPhone? The million-dollar question, right. And while we can't say for sure, this whole deep dive has shown us just how insanely hard it would be. The study even points out one last thing, and it might be the most important one of all. Okay, now you've got me really curious. Hit me with it. All right, so let's say we somehow managed to figure out all that crazy tech stuff. There's still us to worry about, humans. The study, it says that even with all the smarts in the world, if our societies aren't working right, it could all fall apart. Wars, political chaos, even just people not getting along or communicating any of that could send us right back to square one. So it's back to Maslow's hierarchy of needs, but this time it's not just one person, it's the whole world, right? We need things to be stable, we need to work together, we need everyone on the same page if we're going to pull off something this big. Exactly. Rebuilding to the iPhone wouldn't just be about knowing how to build stuff, it'd be about whether we're even capable of it as a species. Mm. Could we get over our differences, share what we have, and actually work together towards a goal? It's a question that makes you think, even without the alien apocalypse happening. It really does, doesn't it? For sure. Yeah. So to everyone listening, imagine, just for a second, the unthinkable happens. We're back to basics, starting from scratch. What do you think would be the biggest hurdle to overcome? Figuring out all the technology again. Or would it be us, you and nature itself? Think about that, and we'll see you next time for another Deep Dive. This is a message for the aliens that are headed towards Earth in a giant course-correcting cube that was recently discovered by the James Webb Telescope. Could you guys hurry up? Because honestly, the guys that are running this place have run it right into the ground. Nobody can afford to eat. Nobody can afford rent. We can't even afford to put gas in our vehicles that will get us to the jobs where we won't make enough money to even live anyway. Cause so it's like there's almost not even any point. And we know there's technology that they have that they're using that they won't let us use that could propel us across the earth in record time on literally no fuel at all. So that's really not cool. And you guys have that stuff and you could bring it to us and you could just give it to us and we could use it. And anyway, if any of these guys show up in suits and introduce themselves as the leader of this earth and they say that they're going to introduce you to us, just smoke them right away with your lasers. Just zap them and get rid of them because they are not out to help us. They're not out to help you. And they certainly don't want you guys to help us. So this is really exciting. Can't wait to see you guys. But please hurry up because this is a mess down here.